Yo, 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 what's going on everybody? Stack Apples Jack here bringing you a brand new video. And today, we're going to be discussing GigaCloud Technologies. They IPO'd on Thursday, and boy, oh boy, what a Friday. What a day, 206% up, sitting at $48. As you can see, the price this IPO at 12.25, so that was the opening price. Increased the deal size to 2.94 million shares, up from the 2.45 million shares that they were going to release first. As you can see, under the new terms, the IPO would raise 27.56 million, which is down 30% from its previous estimate of the 39.38 million. Get into the ownership here. As you can see, individual insiders own almost 50%. Of the shares, another 24% is in the employee share scheme. General public owns roughly 22% institutes at 5%, private companies at 0.8%. And as you can see, Li Wu owns 38.24% of the shares. Now, a big thing here with this, lots of people are comparing this company. I know I skimmed through fairly quickly, but these are the big points we got to get to here. A lot of people are comparing this GCT stock. Giga Cloud to HKD, which we know ran all the way up to $2,500 after its IPO in early August, late July. The big thing here, the SEC prohibits IPO underwriters from lending out shares for a short sale for 30 days. So really, retail controls it. They really do. It There is still possibly a way to short the stock. But again, the float is $2.94 million. So it's barely any shares as you can see two main parties hold inventory of the stack the underwriters and institutional and retail investors the underwriters of the ipo are not allowed to lend out shares for a short sale for 30 days on the other hand institutional and retail investors can lend out their shares to investors who want to short them but there are only a limited amount of shares available as we discussed the 2.94 million as we just saw there previously in the video on the market as the company would have just started trading publicly and the shares may not have been completely transferred. Furthermore, there might be a lack of willingness among investors to lend their shares out to be short sold. Of course, and hence why the massive gap up, extremely low float stock. And not only that, look at their revenue. $4.142 million in revenue last year. This company is a trillion dollar company valuation, unlike the other stocks. That we'll compare them to as you see hkd reached highs of over twenty five hundred dollars another one is gsun they had a 4.4 million shares on the float at ipo which opened a four box and ran all the way to 77 dollars and as you can see megl recently was another one had five million shares open the ipo at four dollars and ran to 249 dollars these ipos are just doing insane guys the low floats are just insane and people are buying it up. The fact you can't short for 30 days is huge. But again, retail has to hold, which is what happened to HKD to make it run all the way up to that insane price. Of course, you're going to want to take profit. I understand that. The more people that sells, you know, the riskier it is and people panic. People tend to panic. Everybody panics when the price goes down and you know, they have a right to. Now, quickly, if you stuck around this late in the video, which I hope you did, this could be another massive play. As you can see, IPOF is the ticker symbol. And again, this is another SPAC play. As we discussed in a video on Friday, the SPAC play DNAA had a massive uproar along with PET. This could be the next one of those plays. Quickly get into it on the 8K report released just last week. As you see, October 14th, 2022 is to complete the initial business combination. While the company is currently evaluating several business combination opportunities, the board of directors of the company has determined that there may not be sufficient time before October 14th to consummate a business combination. And again, they're sending a shareholder to try to extend the date. Again, this is this is a charm of polyhapathia. SPAC play and the hype is building as we've seen as of Friday and before the SPAC plays are going through the roof. But as you can see the company, the big thing here with this is the company estimates that pre-share price at the public shares may be redeemed from cash held in a trust account of approximately $10 at the time of the general meeting per share. The company cannot assure shareholders, though, that they will be able to sell their Class A ordinary shares in the open market 
even if the market price per share is higher than the redemption price stated above. As there may not be sufficient liquidity in the securities when such shareholders wish to sell their shares. And the big thing here is the IPOF warrants and loads of people are beginning to load up on options and the warrants. And the warrants expire September 2025, which again, whatever happens is, you know, insane. And the IPOF warrants hit 522 last year in February. And if if they get over $10 on the DA, this could go insane. This stock could go through the absolute roof. And just a few days ago, there was 772000 volume on the warrants for the IPOF. It has slowed down a bit, but it's getting closer to that mark. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens here. I just wanted to quickly show you this one. I can make a separate video on it if you would like. But again, all the charm of the SPAC play seemed to hype, get hyped up and then... You know, he tends to leave bag holders and whatnot, but this could be a very interesting play here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. GCT could be on the move, and boy, oh boy, could reach heights of HKD with actual fundamentals in play and massive revenues at a trillion dollar valuation, a even shorter and lower float, which is insane. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, guys. Please leave a like, subscribe for more content, and of course, have yourselves a great day. Thanks for watching.